Well, I, I am very happy there. It's absolutely super. No faults. Very quiet. I find it quiet. Well, it's quite good. It's got its good points and it's got its bad points. The staff are very friendly. They do a lot for us to make us comfortable. Well, it's, very, it's very relaxed and pleasant. I think that what's nice about it is that uh, there, there's nobody, there's no sort of officialdom pushing you around. You can come and go as you would normally do at home. The reason behind the move is because people have changed the, their thinking on how they want care to be provided and people are saying that they would, be, they would prefer to be supported in their own homes. In Dunwhinnie it's, it's really group care where although people have their own individual bedrooms and they can individualise them as much as they like, um, it's very much communal living during the day and the rooms are not, the bedrooms are not particularly large. So if people chose to spend their time there all day, it's, it's not a brilliant environment. Well, I'll miss it. <laughs> I'll take all these things with me, of course, and make it as nice as I can before we go. Well, we just have to get used to it, you know. I'm a bit laid back about these things. I feel, you know, it might be ideal, you know. There's something to be said for the communal way of living that we have here because we do meet other people, albeit most of them are ladies, I think. There are not very many men here, but uh, I think the, the, the general uh, feeling about that is that they're there and you feel part of a group. Everyone is so pleasant and they mix well together. If you want to be on your own, you can be on your own. And therefore, the life here suits me very well. I think it's great. Um, straight away, it's really welcoming and mm -hmm. clean and bright. And immediately, we, we all thought, what a shame that it's not going to still be here and uh, and that everybody's got to move and that was a big anxiety for all of us because mum was so anxious when she had to move here concerns that she, well she's, she doesn't want to go back to having her own house again and in effect that's what this is going to be going back into a two-bedroom flat although there will be 24-hour care there but it's nevertheless still going back to being in her own flat again so a lot of relatives have been very, very concerned um, and I think that's probably where most of the concern sits because I think a lot of people have thought that their relative is, is where they need to be and settled for um, probably the rest of their life. We have been able to reassure people, um, or a lot of people anyway, now that we've gone through the, the assessment process and developed a care plan with the care managers and being able to show people how much support people are going to get and it is on a very individualised basis because you're going into one flat with that person. So it's a lot more targeted support than what we actually provide here. After we had our meeting about the assessment and we looked at your needs and things and I said I would mm. make a care plan and I would mm. come back and have a chat with you about that. Okay, okay. so that's what this is and I've put it all together mm -hmm. and it takes you right through the day from getting up in the morning. So you've got you getting up in the morning help with your cleaning of your teeth, getting dressed, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they'll help you with your medication and prepare your breakfast and a wee cup of tea mm -hmm. just to get you on the go, okay? So that's right. in the morning, 45 minutes. Then they'll come come back mid-morning, meet you another wee cuppa and a biscuit, mm -hmm. if you like. 
I'm going to be awful lazy, am I not? Are you going to? Well, no, because I think if you want to do things, we'll, you know, we'll try and, and help you mm. do these tasks with you. Because we don't, mm-hmm. well, we don't want you getting lazy. We don't want to take away your independence. We want you, you to do as much as you can. Yeah. Okay? That's right. As far as I can see, the social work department and the staff um, are doing everything they can to ease the transition. Um, and there's phases yet to begin, I think, that haven't haven't kicked in yet, where the staff, the social work staff and the Red Cross volunteers are going to come up and get to know the residents uh, if they don't already. We did a workshop yesterday with the senior team and we've got a workshop next week with um, the full staff team and that's about the deployment of staff and how it's going to be different We've also got a workshop looking at dealing with change because it's going to be a massive change for the staff team as well as the, the residents. Quite concerned about the move, to be honest. I, uh, I, I really like the atmosphere that's here and it's just, for me, it's a big change to go from a, a residential home back into flats. Um, and I've never done that kind of care before. I know it's similar, but it's just because we've been here for so long and the old saying that it's I've been that way I think you get used to it and I'm just not looking forward to to the move. Life for the residents I think uh, uh, for some I think will be great we have a resident just now who's looking forward to inviting a friend up from uh, Greenock to stay for the week which I just think is fabulous that they can do that um, and she's looking forward to being able to just put her own mark on her flat and she's getting quite excited actually about what, what she's buying whereas we have some that are a bit more tentative and that's what we'll be there for to really help the ones that are more anxious in um, but even on that case I think it'll be great because there's more people to meet and more of a wide range Most of the information that we've had that we've had from some of the um, publications that they've prepared for new people and ourselves, um, which gives you some idea of what the rooms are going to be like. Is that it, Dalwini? It's Dalwini. That's it, that's the new place, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, there's a lot of quite a good things in the book. And I thought, well, I could tackle that, and I could tackle the next thing. I'm a goer. <laughs> That's nice, that wee one, that. It's an Oreo. It's got cream in the middle. Oh, that's a kind of Yeah. What is it? That one, yeah. Well, I think there'll be more privacy. No, for for, the tenants. More privacy. You know, it's like just being at home. You can just shut your door if you don't want to be bothered. If anybody's wanting to hang, they can ring the bell or knock at the door. <laughs> we'll have our own front door, so we'll feel more as if we're in our own home. Well, this is not obviously a home, it's uh, a home in quotes. <laughs> so what we are providing is people having their own tenancy so being in their own homes, but 24-hour staff team on site as well. So people really benefit from having the best of both worlds of a 24-hour support team and their own home and their own environment to, to feel comfortable in. I'm not very keen about it because it's lovely here. But where are we going? Here we are at Dovecot Court. We've actually got two parts to the, the whole development site. We have 37 flats here, 37 self-contained flats, together with the common lounge, which we've seen at the start of uh, the tour, and also the staff facilities as well. On the other side of the courtyard, the central courtyard, we have general needs flats. They're due for completion very shortly. And the idea behind putting our extra care housing together with the general needs flats was to create a better balance, more of a community within this Dovecot Road area. I thought it's lovely. It looks lovely from the outside. 
but I think it's lovely inside. I've heard about that. The design is really based on two wings. We've got groups of five flats on each wing and this central circulation space. And the reason for doing that was to try to create identifiable neighbourhoods of five flats which wouldn't become a, an anonymous, overly, overly large uh, development that people could identify with their own little neighbourhood. Each entrance to each flat is highlighted by this recess. And again, it's to give you space to either park a wheelchair outside your flat or indeed to personalise your flat or your, or your uh, entrance door so that you can recognise it more easily. It doesn't become anonymous and difficult to locate. Each of the flats are three-person, two-bedroom size. The main bedroom is either a double bedroom or a twin bedroom, so it builds in flexibility for future use. The kitchen's been designed um, primarily with carers or other family members or people who are not necessarily wheelchair users operating the kitchen. And the anticipation is that people living in their own homes will either prepare some food by themselves or get some assistance to prepare food uh, together. And it just continues to help to maintain their independence and personal choice about what they have, when they have it. I like my own kitchen. Mm -hmm. In a spare room. I could have my visitors for the weekend. <laughs> Looking for things this morning, it's no there. They're in the box. <laughs> well, I've not had a lot to do in that line because everything was in its place where we were, so it's just a case of moving the, what you've got there ready. I think the girls have done most of it. I see there's plenty of boxes lying around with stuff in, so presumably everything that's in the boxes is mine. If not, <laughs> it's going anyway. <laughs> and we've had the Red Cross here, and we've had a lot of the women round about asking questions, and it's been quite good. <clears throat> and last night when I went into my bedroom, there was a great big box. And in it, I never took it out, of course. In it, there was a lovely electric kettle and toaster and all the things you're going to need in the kitchen. And I was pleased about that. I've been over and had a look at the, and a look at the place we're going to. That was interesting. Well, it was lovely, but the worst men were in, you know. But the, the flat itself, there was loads of room. Wait, I just live with a wee matchbox now. <laughs> it's been very nice here. Yeah, I've had a lot of good time, has not it? Very comfortable room. And could watch the see if they come to visit. <laughs> well, I think it'll be something different. I think we might get more visitors because people shop in that area and they'll probably pop in and see us. Getting a little place to myself. That's what I'm looking forward to. Sometimes I like to be in my own. And you don't get that in here. Unless you go to your bed. <laughs> Mostly people are quite happy about it. Well, there are one or two grump, grumpies that uh, always think it's going to be worse. 
without even having seen the place, you know. So that's, uh, you get that inevitably. There are always people who don't like a change. All right, Yes, not right. And we'll go round the back. I think my feelings at first was I was quite worried um, and that was purely because you, it's the unknown. It's a lovely wee family we've got here and I think I was a bit scared that we were going to lose that but speaking to other staff members we're all going so Dunwhinnie we're going to Duffcote, it'll be a new Duffcote, a new family, but it's still the old staff. And I think it will just still be how we make it. Well, we'll not be coming down this road again. Yeah, the spirit of Dunwinny will still go. We're all there, we've still got all the memories, we can still talk about it and carry it on. That's the way I'm trying to look at it, because I do not want to be in tears for the next two days. Yeah, it's been a tremendous amount of work on everybody's part to get the building ready for occupation. Um, certainly on our part, it's been quite a, a, a big lead up to the final fortnight prior to the first tenants moving in. Just getting everything finished, getting every, uh, all the systems up and running, making sure that um, care staff are au fait with all the systems that are in place as well. It, um, it's, it has actually been a very hectic fortnight. A lovely place, <laughs> like a five-star hotel. Nice. Okay. Oh, okay, I'll just open people. Right, I think, see, it's all busy, busy in here. Do you want to come through here? Oh, yeah. Recognize. This is Mrs. Officer. All right. This Hello. is Mrs. Officer's Hello. house. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Don't know if you know anything, please, just like it. Do you want to take a seat there just now? Get you, out there. Get you in the corner. So this is this is you. Super, thank you. And I see things belonging to me already, and you know it feels comfortable. I'm quite happy. I'm a baobab tree from Africa. It's an upside down tree. Hello, did, I, did you arrive? <laughs> Hello, Rina. <laughs> <laughs> the transition has been quite good. Um, we were down yesterday getting it all ready and we flittered. Or moved all our stuff last Monday. But we have still all the pictures and all the other things to bring down when she has back to her house to have a look what she wants. I'm very pleased with it and I've no faults to find and I'm quite happy. Well, it feels more like home <laughs> when it's your own stuff that's in it. Once you meet the different people next door, or you'll get more accustomed to it. Hello, I've got a visitor. I've got a visitor. <laughs> There's your friend. Our invo involvement is to help the, the tenants with their uh, social needs, um, moving from residential care uh, where everything is uh, done in a communal area is a, a big change so uh, we've been asked to um, bring our programme into Dovecot to help folk uh, engage in the community and to engage the community in Dovecot using volunteers uh, to facilitate that. It's good. I'm, I'm pleased to see what it's like when the carpets are down there, how there's no noise of anybody walking around. It's very nice indeed. He's waiting on you. Hi. He's waiting on you. Welcome to the court. <laughs> there we go. Just watch the threshold. Uh -huh. There's a wee bit of a bump. There's a wee limp. Okay. 
Yeah. It is funny yeah. coming into our own place. Oh, it is. I'm not really used to the idea that it's ours yet, do you know? I, I see all my books up there, that's lovely. It, oh, it, it makes oh, it look you like thought you'd lost a lot before. Yes, it's yes. a nice little room size, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is indeed. I'm admiring the view behind you, for instance. And that's terrific. That's a Venlaw, isn't it? That's a Venlaw, yes. So we've come from Venlaw View to Venlaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Our last address The last was house we were in was Venlaw View. So it's bit. like being at home again. Yes. And we recognise it as home because all our stuff is here. I like the location. It's more central. It's more with it. I like the rooms. The, how they have been separated. The whole outlay is fine. The main impact for them is to be together. This is what they wanted because in Dunwinia it's obviously they were together but in separate rooms um, and in different areas of Dunwinnie. So um, the fact that they're together is, is paramount to both, both of them and to us, to, and, you know, to me as their daughter and their grandchildren. So I think it's been a wonderful idea to, be, to have them be, be able to get together. But if they want to share, the, you know, share a bit of company, they can just wander off and, and, and you go into the communal areas, which is brilliant. Well, I can't say anything but of Dunvinny, but this is nicer. Big impact from day one, really, of the move. Um, the first day that the first seven people moved from Dunwinny, um, almost immediately we saw a change in quite a few people um, because people just without any real prompting, began washing their own dishes, making cups of tea, getting involved in preparing their meals. And that was something that the environment at Dunwinnie just didn't really lend itself to at all. And as soon as people were in a different environment, they began using the skills that they had. So it was fantastic to see. Oh, that's nice. Well, we're all good pals, you know, and I, I go over to my friend across the road and have a over her and she comes here and it's great really. And then we can go up and join the list when there's something special on you. Okay, so we're looking for base colours. They love it because it's what they remember from Dunwinny was getting together and chatting. You know, that's still there for them. Right. Pop your fingers in here. Watch this. And pop, pop your fingers in the bowl, Josephine. And, and then you just pop pop pop. Just look, they're all together, united in a craft, um, chatting. We have a wee cup of tea at the end, it's very important. I need it. I believe you need to. And yeah, it's a very social thing as well, so it's been super. Yeah. There we are. I've only right. started, I don't know the first thing about it. <laughs> yeah, there we are. I'm a learner. Okay, and at 95. Okay. You could just pat some bubbles in there and see that. Oh, is that like? <laughs> Finish now. Not yet. Not yet. And put this this way. <laughs> that would be really good, actually. You take it easy with We have a good time at the art class. Uh, it's amazing what we can, we never thought you could do, you know. Oh yes, they've got everything, everything that one needs. And they're quite close by. Well, it is important because I've been, I've had a very active life and uh, I retired late and I want to live quite a long time yet. I'm only in my late 80s, so I'm hoping to live to be 100 here. There's 
lots of different things that we have. We've got bed sensors, um, chair sensors, and Lily's wearing a full sensor. Um, so Lily can push the that black button and that will alert staff um, and she's in control of um, calling for staff in that instance but also if Lily was to fall automatically staff would be alerted onto the handset <laughs> uh, and it would say on the screen there fall detector and when you answer the call it'll tell you which flat. I feel it is definitely giving me more comfort in so, so far as if anything happens either to, both, to one or both of us uh, there's somebody alarmed more or less immediately which I think is an important thing because when you get to our age falling is not an unknown <laughs> thing you know <laughs> King's Meadows Catering is a social enterprise. It's a charity, a registered charity, and we offer work placements to adults with learning disability, mainly learning disabilities, and we're a catering company. Well, I think because and the, for the residents that have come from Dunhwinnie, it's a continuity for them because they were used to having a hot meal. Um, well, they, at that point, it would be seven days a week. This gives them something similar. They've still got that opportunity to come down have a hot meal, but also keep that social aspect of um, what was going on at Dunhwinnie. So it's quite good. It benefits everyone, really, doesn't it? Works very well because you do get to see other people, but you're not sort of living with them. They're there, but you can say hello to them and feel that they're part of the, the group. Yeah, Dunhwinnie was more uh, a house than a home. This is very much a home, I would say. What would you like on your sandwich? Cheese, please. Cheese. Now, would you like spreadable cheese? You feel you have a little home of your own. The normal one. Okay. Well, just freedom to be in your own house and get people in and... and uh, Get your own stuff around about you. Yeah, a very homely feeling. You live in a sort of community and you are, are your own person in your own flat, which is very important. Mm -hmm.